Good morning, church. Come on, stand to your feet. What a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Come on, let's sing together. Come on. When night has fallen and fear is calling, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. And when my mind Amen. Welcome somebody to the house of the Lord. Somebody you hadn't seen yet, feel free to cross the continents, cross the aisles, however you need to do that. Skip around. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell them you're looking good today. Amen. Thank you. I heard somebody say that to me. I just heard that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You can be seated. In the presence of the Lord. This is a special, special, special day. We are celebrating 70 years of spirit empowered gospel mission and witness for the kingdom of God. For 70 years, this church has been basically in this location, started right over there to the north of us. And so we are so thankful. For all that God has done, it was set in order on June 6th, 1952. That was a Friday. So I don't know what was going on on Friday, or maybe that's just when it got registered at Cleveland. I don't, 
I'm not, I'm not real sure. I know that June 1st was Pentecost Sunday, right? And then the next Sunday was June 8th. So I don't know, I don't know what happened, maybe how that worked out. But, uh, but we're celebrating today, uh, 20 days after the established day, but we're excited. We're glad for all of you, and I'm going to um, introduce different people at that appropriate time, but I just want to say welcome, welcome to everyone. Amen? The 70th anniversary is the platinum anniversary. Platinum is more rare than gold, meaning gold is in more abundance than platinum. Platinum is heavy. Matter of fact, a six by six inch cube, its average weight is the weight of an adult male. But the thing about platinum that makes it special is that it's used in jewelry because it does not tarnish. So the church is a lot like platinum. Amen. She is the bride of Christ. She has no spot. She has no blemish. She has no wrinkles. She has no sign of, of age. And so today we, we celebrate that. And I just want to say a few things about anniversaries, if you'll just give me a moment. Anniversaries are an important part of life. They remind us of important events. Whether we're marking a birthday, a wedding, a holiday, a momentous event, or the death of a loved one. An anniversary puts a pin, P-I-N, pin, on the calendar to remind us of something that matters to us. Noel Piper's book, Treasuring God in Our Traditions, names God as the inventor of the tradition of celebrating anniversaries. I don't know if you know that or not, but God is the one who began this idea of celebrating anniversaries. In the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 14, Now this day will be a memorial to you, and you shall celebrate it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you are to celebrate it as a permanent ordinance. What event was that? That was Passover. One year later in Numbers chapter 9, God reminds Moses, the Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai in the first month of the second year that they came out of Egypt. God said, have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Celebrate it at the appointed time at twilight on the 14th day of the month in accordance with all its rules and regulations. So Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover. I love verse 9. Numbers 9 verse 5. I mean, I love this. And it says, and they did. God said, celebrate this day. And they did. God said, mark this as a perpetual anniversary. And you will find throughout your Bible, even when Israel forgot to celebrate other feasts, they still celebrated the Feast of Passover. Even when they were in captivity, they celebrated the Feast of Passover. You see, God marks the beginnings of things. The reason he marks the beginning of things is because he only knows how long that thing will last. You and I use that anniversary as a memorial to remember how far we have come. But we don't know how far we have yet to go. Only God knows that. So he says, in the meantime, celebrate this anniversary. Amen? So as long as I'm the pastor here, we're going to celebrate the founding of this church. I encourage you, celebrate 
your spiritual birthday. If you know the day that you got saved, celebrate that spiritual birthday. Celebrate spiritual events. Celebrate as you would the birth of your children or your wedding anniversary. Celebrate the spiritual markers in your life. These things are important. You see, anniversaries are important and should be celebrated. Not just because they show us of how far we have come, but because they also speak to us of hope. That's why I love Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans, some translations say thoughts, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Isn't it wonderful that God has plans for us? They are plans of peace and not of evil to give us a future and a hope. Amen. North Elliott, let me remind you, we may be marking the 70th anniversary, but we still have a long way to go. Amen. Every time Twyla and I have an anniversary, this year we'll have our 34th anniversary, and so I'll write something like this. We're celebrating 34, and we got 34 more to go, right? Do you do that? Do you double your anniversary? I don't know if that's how many Twyla and I have yet to go, but I'm going to celebrate them, and I want us to celebrate them because we have a future and we have a hope. Amen? Amen. I'm going to invite the ushers to come down as they get ready to serve you. And I want to ask you to get an anniversary offering in your hand. Amen. May be your normal tithe. It may be a special gift. But I'm going to ask you to get that offering in your hand. And I want us to bless this offering together. Maybe you give online. You can do so at our website, which, by the way, we just launched our new website. If you haven't gone there, just launched this weekend, go check out our new website. We're excited about what God is doing. You can give through Facebook. You can text to give, 844-492-9984. You can do that right there. You can give in this offering, or if you are at home and you don't do any of that electronics, you can mail your offering in. I want everyone to have a part in this special offering. Let's remember this day for all that it marks, but let's also remember that we have a future and a hope. Amen? Let's pray over the offering together. Father, I thank you right now for every gift that is given for every act of faith and every act of courage that it is taking for someone to give today. Father, I pray that you bless our collective offering, that it prosper and go far, that it isn't just about an amount, but about the heart. May you take note of every heart as they give today. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. After you give, would you just... Get ready to worship.
tried so hard to see it. It took me so long to believe it. That you choose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection could never earn it. We give what we don't deserve. You take the broken things, raise them to glory. You are my champion. As giants fall when you stand undefeated, every battle you won. I am who you say. crashing down I had the authority and Jesus has given Don't hold it back. me when I, I open up my mouth and miracles start breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given
Just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within the prisons. I speak Jesus.
Hallelujah. While the praise team just kind of plays behind me, I want to I want to make a deal with you. The deal is this. This service is going to be longer than normal, but we're going to feed you afterwards, so you're okay, right? You don't have to go to a restaurant. You don't have to wait in line. Because right now, I just feel like somebody needs to speak the name of Jesus over their life. I don't know what the chaos is in your life. I don't know what the dysfunction is is. I don't know what the anxiety is. I don't know what the heartbreak is. I don't know what the disappointment is. But there's something powerful when you speak the name of Jesus. Yes, there are men of God in this building and we could take authority over every sickness, every disease, every infirmity. But the devil is going to come right back on your shoulder until you speak the name of Jesus. Until you declare Jesus over my family. Jesus over my job. Jesus over my finances. Jesus over my health. Jesus over this situation. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Would you do that right now? Would you do that right now while they sing a little bit of this? Would you just over yourself? I mean, if you got to come get the oil, anoint your own finger, put it on your head and say, Jesus, amen. Do what you got to do right now. Hallelujah. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like the fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is fire. Break every stronghold. One more time. Jesus. Jesus in the street. Jesus. Jesus in the dark. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm free. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. Jesus from the mountain. near somebody, just put your hand on the shoulder, say a little prayer over them, and let them know, I believe you received it. I believe you received whatever you are needing. Just give them that encouragement. I believe whatever you are looking for in Jesus, I believe you got it. I believe you got it. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I guarantee you we're not done.
Hallelujah. Right now, wherever you are, you need to do that. If you're in this building and you're backslidden on the Lord, you hadn't been in church in a long time, you hadn't prayed in a long time, you've grown cold, you need to rededicate, or you're here for the first time and you need to give your heart to Jesus, you feel something warm in your chest, and you're ready to be free of your past, and you're ready to be free of your sin, you're ready to be free, truly free, truly free, just call on him right now, that's what he instructed us to do, the Lord of the, Lord of the church has instructed us to call on his name. He said he was healer, he said he was savior, he said he was deliverer. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, we call on your name. Forgive me of sin known and unknown. Forgive me of my faults and failures. Forgive me of times that I didn't stand or times I didn't witness. Because I know that that which is not of faith is sin. Strengthen me, enable me, equip me. I give you my life again. I turn it over to you. Put me back on the potter's wheel. Shape me. Remake me into what you want me to be, a useful vessel. Pour your spirit into me right now. Rebaptize, baptize in your spirit. Cleanse me, make me whole right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. As I said, God, God's not done. There's many, many things yet to come that are going to be spiritual in this service. But I want to tell you that a church doesn't get 70 years of age without leadership. This church has had 13 pastors. I want to thank Ray Dean McFarlane. I want to thank Brother and Sister Kilman. And I want to thank Brother and Sister Vance for providing me with the list of names. If I miss someone, I'm sorry, or if they're out of order, I'm sorry. But the first pastor of this church was Joel Stamper. He would come back and pastor it a second time, but he was the first pastor. Some of the pastors, we don't know their first names. Some we do. Brother Froud was the second pastor, and then he left shortly after coming, and his brother... Harry came and pastored. So, Brother Froud, number two. And then Melvin Grant. And then W.W. W. Yoder. After that was a brother Thompson. And then after that was a brother and sister Gamble. I think I said that right. And the reason we're listing her is because she was a better preacher than him, I'm told. So we give honor to her. <laughs> And then there was a brother, Medlin, and then William Vance, who has the second longest tenure of this church at 11 years, and then Robert Kilman, 37 years, amen, hallelujah. If you want to go ahead and make your way, Brother Kilman, while I finish. Uh, Joey Terman followed Brother Kilman, and then I followed Joey Terman. If you would look in an encyclopedia under the word shepherd, I think you'd find a picture of Brother and Sister Kilman. And I couldn't think of anyone to represent us pastors more than Brother Kilman. If anyone, not only the longest tenure, I... I, I told him the other day, I said, so if you put us on a scale, here's 12 of us, 33 years. <laughs> here's you, 37 years. <laughs> Amen. And so I want to welcome him to the podium. I love you. I am so grateful to see so many of you. God's been good to us. So good to us. And uh, the people, you the people made the church. You the people made the church. 
you're the people help make me. And I am so honored just to be able to come up here. I know I've been to this pulpit many, many, many times. But uh, today is different. And uh, I, I, feel, I feel different about it. I think one of the greatest blessings of God to us was in October of 1981 when the prior church of God voted for us to come and be your shepherd. That had to be from God because we had never been to the prior church of God. Wasn't aware of it at the time, but only one person in this church knew me. And that was because she had attended some classes that I taught at the Lawton Church of God on how to be a people helper. When we arrived, we met some of God's choice people. And the only way I know of describing you as a church was the words of Jesus. Quoting from Isaiah said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. And then there's a whole list of ministries, and all of them is about helping people and touching the lives of people. He has anointed me. And John later would write in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 20, but you have an anointing. And the only way I can describe the people of this church when we came is that you have an anointing. You are anointed of God to do ministry, to carry out ministry. And you fulfilled those duties. You were faithful constantly in fulfilling those duties, teaching classes under the anointing of God, singing songs under the anointing of God, lifting your voice in praise. You were anointed of the Lord, and it was you that carried on the ministry of this church. It was you that made North Elliott what it was and what it is. And I want to honor you today. I want you to receive recognition today because of what God has done for you. And it was the church, it was the people of God that was anointed. We had five services a week. And some of you made every one of them. You never missed them. You were here for every one of them. You were faithful to God in your attendance. You were faithful to God in your giving. You were faithful to God in your support. And that took God to get that accomplished. We were moved of the Lord to prepare ourselves for worship in every service. Because we had prayed about it and we had asked God to send them. And we knew there was going to be people in every service who needed God to touch them. They needed God to minister to them. And we knew we had to be prepared ourselves in order to do it because we needed God's help. We didn't have the ability. We didn't have the know-how. We couldn't accomplish for God what God wanted to accomplish. And we knew we needed God. And isn't that what the scripture said? It's not by might. It's not by your knowledge. It's not by your abilities. It's not by your understanding. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit. And we knew, we knew we needed the spirit of God because there was going to be hurting people that came. And that caused us to seek God for every service. That was our focus. That's why we had prayer service every Friday night for 36 years. Because we're praying for the church. We're praying for people. We're asking God to touch us. Asking God to anoint us. And asking God to move in our midst. 
people came early and they would come and kneel in the altars and they would call out to God, preparing themselves for that time of praise and worship so that when somebody came in that needed God to touch them, God would minister and God would touch them. There was a, a willingness to allow the Holy Spirit to choose who he wanted to use. Some of you were here when I came. You're still here today, and you understand what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit would choose who to minister through. Sometimes it was a song that somebody got up and sang as a special, and God touched them because they were anointed of God to sing, and it ministered to somebody's heart and it strengthened them. Many times it was God getting ready to move during any time in the service, and we were willing to step aside and say, God, do what you want to do. And God ministered, and God touched the hearts of people. Our music program wasn't just to sing songs. It wasn't to entertain anybody. It was to lead you into the presence of God, because it's only in the presence of God that there's healing and ministry for hurt people and for struggling people. And thank God for it. So it was and is the church, the people, who should be acknowledged here this morning. I, I, I wanted to do it. I, I may shouldn't because Brother Jarvis is going to be preaching. But you were so faithful. Many, many have gone on to be with Jesus, but they were so faithful, and you are so faithful to God, and I think that acknowledgement ought to be given. We prayed for his presence. We were ready to allow him to have his way, and he would show up. He would show up. Lois and I have been looking back through box after box of albums of pictures and letters and cards and children. I was, I was so excited about rereading re those little children cards. Oh, we've saved them all. We've got them all in boxes at the house. And those children that wrote those little notes to us now are grown and have children of their own. We're so blessed and touched by it. But two, two letters especially caught my attention. And I want to share them because I believe that's a description of North Elliott Church of God. The first family wrote and said, We came to your church that first Sunday morning. and We had no intention of staying. We just came to visit that Sunday morning. We had been so hurt and broken in the previous church that we were a part of that we had decided we would never again get involved in a church. But they said when we came into your doors of your church, we felt the special spirit of God. And as the people began to worship and rejoice in the Lord, Throughout that entire service, said we felt the healing spirit and all the brokenness and all the hurt and everything that had happened, God instantly healed and took away. And we've been there every service since then. And that was years ago. And the only time we haven't been there is when we were sick or we were on vacation because of God's healing power. The second letter that I, I want to share with you is simply this. They said, when we moved 17 years ago from Memphis, we knew we would probably never find another church like the church we were in. And we knew we probably would never find another pastor like the pastor that we had. But said the very first service, the moving of the Spirit of God, the presence of the Lord, and the way the people just worshipped and prayed with one another. 
you, you remember it. Some of you were councilmen even back then. You remember it. One of the first things we talked about being a, a council member was be ready to pray with people when they come. And you prayed with them. You remember that. You, you prayed with them. When people came down, you prayed with them because you were anointed of God to do it. And God used you and ministered. We saw miracles after miracles happen because of that. But she said, we were there that morning and we knew immediately we had found our church. We had found our church. And they stayed with us until they left and went somewhere else with their son. And uh, if, I'd, if I'd tell you where they went, a lot of you would know exactly who I'm talking about. And I'm trying not to mention names this morning. But two letters that describe this church. There was a song that I used to sing that when I first found that song, I said, that's me. That's my heart. And that's the heart of the people at North Elliott Church of God. And it simply said this, the chorus of it. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Lord, let my words heal the heart that hurts. I want to spend my life mending broken people. That's my heart. That's the heart of this church. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. First Corinth, excuse me, first Timothy five seventeen tells us that they who labor in word and doctrine are worthy of double honor. And so I give uh, Pastor Kilman double honor. I told him I had a hard time when I come because he had to pastor me. I said, I'll pastor the people, you pastor me. <laughs> <laughs> and he has thus far been such a covering and a and a shield and a person that I can bounce things off of. I, I truly appreciate that. I know COVID slowed us down a little bit, but we'll get together a lot more as the future unfolds. Amen. But in keeping with double honor, we're so thankful to have our administrative bishop. David Jarvis and First Lady Jan with us today uh, to minister the word. And uh, for the first time, the Jarvises came to Oklahoma in 1993 as a state youth and Christian education directors. And God saw fit in 2018 to send them back. Only now it's Oklahoma and Kansas to the heartland. They are many, many things. They are my friends. First of all, I met uh, David Jarvis, I'll say it like that, no, no offense, when my father-in-law pastored out in, out in Mangum, and I met him for the first time back in the 1990s, and so we've known each other a long, a long time, but they're gifted administrators, they're gospel singers, and he is a gospel preacher. And so I want to invite them both to come take your liberty. You can sing one, you can sing two, or you can just preach. Y'all just take your liberty. However you feel God directing you. Would you welcome our administrative bishop and first lady? Praise God. What a joy it is to be in the Lord's house this morning. Are you glad to be in the Lord's house? 
You all looking good for 70 years old, I tell you what. What a joy it is to be here. And I'm just going to say, uh, this is one of my favorite places that I get to preach. I've been preaching here for you since 1993 and loved going home with them and eating with the family. And I told Sister Kilman, I said, if there's any dish out there, point it to me because I want to eat it. Praise God. But it is a joy to be in the Lord's house today. So good to see Pastor Ray Phillips. He's from one of the greatest places in the world and dear to our hearts. Amen. <clears throat> He's from the same neck of the woods that I'm from. And uh, my mama lives there in Butler County, Ohio. And it's so good to see him and, of course, all of our family there. And Jan's dad was a pastor there. And we're just delighted to be here today. I want to first give honor to Brother Sister Kilman. He bragged on you, but we know that God uses people, amen? God uses you, but can I tell you something? I've been doing pastoral placements in Anadarko, Oklahoma, and you left there, was it 1981 you left there to come here? How many of you know 1981 was a long time ago? They're still talking about Robert Lois Kilman in Anadarko, Oklahoma in, 20, uh, in 2021 when I was there for a pastoral placement because God uses people and God uses their lives to make a mark on a place. And for 36 years, God used the Kilmans to make a mark on Mays County and this whole green country. Would you let them know you love them and appreciate them? Amen. More than that, they're my friends, and I love them and appreciate them so very, very much. And Pastor Ken and Twyla Angel, they're just choice servants of the Lord, and we're just thankful for their friendship and their ministry. He is a leader in the heartland, and we love and appreciate him and what God is doing through their lives and their families. We appreciate them so very, very much. You've got a short preacher today because I'm going to get hungry before you are. So I'm going to try to be fast, if you'll listen fast. How many of you will listen fast? But they've asked us to sing a song, and I'll take this off my preaching time. And uh, I used to do a five-minute radio program, and so I could try to pretend like I'm back on radio this morning. Go ahead and sing that, what you felt like the Lord put on your heart. When I first heard of Jesus, of His love, My heart was overwhelmed To think a king would take my place I cried, Lord, I'll go with you Every step of the way That's all I can do My debt to told him that I loved him. It seemed so easy to say, but so much harder to prove it when temptation came my way. But what good are broken promises? I count them but lost when I call it was hanging on a rugged cross. I love him too. Hallelujah. Fail him now. Now the years have drawn us closer, and my love for him has grown. Each day just brings us that much easier to our 
our eternal home. Now we're just too close to heaven to turn back now. I know His grace is going to be sufficient. We're going to make it somehow. Maybe that's your way you feel this morning. Hallelujah. If our drummer could come back up here and some of our rhythm, if you can, we're going to sing an old song. They asked us to sing an old song this morning, and uh, that's about all we know is old songs. But uh, anybody ever hear of the Happy Goodman family? There's a few of you. Just a few days ago, in fact, Easter Sunday, I was... Uh, preaching at the Five Church of God on Vestal Goodman Highway in Fife, Alabama. And I couldn't help but think of this song. And Pastor requested this song. I wouldn't take nothing from a journey now. Seventy years, we wouldn't take nothing for a journey now. My wife's got bronchitis, so pray for her. Travel for the Lord many years ago. I've had a lot of heartache, man, a lot of grief and woe. But when I would stumble, then I would humble down. I can say, praise the Lord, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, well I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. now. I gotta, gotta make, make it, it to heaven, heaven somehow. Though the devil tries to turn me around. Everything that's got a name, all the wealth I want, worldly fame, if I could still would take them. Oh, that's the way I feel this morning. Hallelujah. There's nothing in the world that could ever take the place of God's love. All the silver and gold could ever buy. One mighty touch from above. When the soul needs healing, I begin feeling his power. I can say, praise the Lord, I wouldn't take nothing. Sing it with us now. Get to heaven somehow, though the devil tempts me and tries to turn me around. Well, he's offered everything that's got a name, all the wealth I want. Well, sing that chorus one more. Is that your testimony today? Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I gotta make it to heaven somehow, though the devil tempts me and tries to turn me around. Well, he's offered everything that's got a name, all the wealth. Sing that last verse one more time if you can. Hallelujah. There's nothing in the world that could ever take the place of God's love. All the silver and gold could ever buy. One mighty touch from above. When the soul needs healing, I begin feeling his power. I can say, praise the Lord, I wouldn't take nothing. Well, I wish somebody would sing it with me. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I got to make it to heaven somehow. Sing it one more time, hallelujah. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I got to make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempts me, he tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's got a name, all the wealth I want, worldly fame. If I could still, I wouldn't take nothing Would you just give the Lord the best praise you've given him all day, hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. We adore you this morning. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Remain standing for the reading of God's Word. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. 
And it said, for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. Whatever is born of God overcometh, overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. How many of you believe the North Elliott Church of God was born of God? And it's overcoming 70 years later because this was born of God. Ask the Lord to have his way with me today. Father, we love you and we thank you for the opportunity of being in your house today, dear Lord. I confess to you that I'm nothing without you. I need the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Lord. And Father, would you just bind every devil in hell against this service and cover this service with your blood. We want your will to be accomplished, dear Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, turn around and tell somebody they look good for 70 years old. Amen. If I could get a little more monitor here, I'd appreciate it. Praise God. The year was 1952. It was a time of turmoil. We were involved in the Korean War. There was a dreaded virus that was spreading around the world. Some 58,000 people in the United States contracted polio, the crippling disease that paralyzed you. Some 3,300 people died in 1952 of this crippling disease. But in the midst of all of that, God was still moving across the earth. People were praying and God was hearing them. 1952 is also the year that Mother Teresa opened the home for the dying and the destitute in Calcutta, India. Jonas Salak discovered a vaccine for polio that would stop, stop this dreaded plague. And a man by the name of Joel Stamper heard the voice of the Lord that said, plant a church in Pryor, Oklahoma. And today we celebrate that event that took place 70 years ago because there was a vision and because somebody listened to the Lord, there have been multitude of thousands of people that have come across this property that have been saved, set free, delivered, filled with the Holy Ghost, and healed marriages, put back together, and broken lives were mended because in 1952, God spoke a word to somebody, and that was born of God in 1952. And my Bible says, what is born of the Lord, whatever is born of Him, over comes the world and today on this Sunday 70 years later we can say with a victorious shout we're overcomers through what all that we've been through God has helped us and we are overcomers would you give the Lord a great hand clap of praise this morning Thank God for every message. Thank God for every song. Thank God for every Sunday school lesson. Thank God for every dollar that has come here and that's been sent around the world. Thank God for those times that you have given to the kingdom of God and to missionaries. There have been many happy occasions that have taken place on this property. But you know what? The enemy has not set back in silence. He has unleashed everything he's got against the North Elliott Church of God. But aren't you glad he can't destroy the church of Jesus Christ? Aren't you glad the gates of hell will never, ever prevail against his church? And i got to say it one more time. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And we are more than conquerors today. And we can stand here flat-footedly and look back and say we've come this far by faith. The hand of God was upon this building, upon this people, upon this property, upon this church. We thank God for what He has done for 70 years. This church is born of God. That's why. After all the devil is done, you're still standing through diversions, distractions, and difficulties, and times of defeat. You know what? You have worshipped your way through it, and you worshipped through the good times, and you worshipped in the bad times. But you worshipped your way through it, and you're victorious today. 
You know what? In 2022, we find ourselves in a very similar situation to when you began in 2022. It's a time of turmoil. We see Ukraine and the threat of global war, the dreaded COVID that has taken the lives of probably everybody here knows somebody that has died because of the dreaded disease or virus of COVID. 1952 is a lot like 2022. But it was in that year that God burst something in the heart of Brother Stamper and others. But you know what I believe? It's in this year God is birthing new things right now for the North Elliott Church of God to carry us through should he tarry another 70 years. I personally don't believe that we've got that long, but I know one thing. I believe God is birthing something new that will take us all till Jesus Christ steps out on the cloud and splits the eastern sky and Gabriel picks up that trumpet and blows it. I believe God is positioning you again for another time to see victory, for another time to see souls won. I don't believe God is finished with us yet. I believe God has got many things to accomplish through the north Elliot Church of God yes there will still be times of battle and discouragement but you know what we will worship our way through it until Jesus comes I don't know how long it is that we've got but I declare to you today if we will worship our way through whatever comes our way we will make it and be victorious just as the saints of God have done here for many, many years. I can't help, every time I come here I can't help but thinking about Sister Robbie Atkinson. I never heard her say a discouraging word. She was always a joy to be around. In fact, in youth camp, the busiest place at youth camp was the nurse's station. Everybody wanted to go see Robbie. And she would pray for him and love on him. And you know what? I can't help but think about saints like her that have been through all kinds of things and they came through it because they worshiped their way through all these things the devil has thrown at us. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 15. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go there with me and I'm hurrying. Verse 21, it says, And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. That's one of the strangest scriptures in the, in the Bible to me. Jesus would not answer her. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But look at verse 25. It says, then. Everybody say, then. Everybody say, then. When? Then. She came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, Woman, great is thy faith, let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Can you imagine how discouraged she must have been? Her daughter was severely possessed of the devil and and she went to find Jesus and, and get her miracle. And when she got there to Jesus Christ, the Bible says that Jesus basically ignored her. And the disciples, they said, Lord, get rid of her. You know what? They were prejudiced. They didn't want her. She had the wrong pedigree. She was not a Jew. They didn't want her bothering them. So now she is the object of prejudice. And she doesn't even get a word out of Jesus Christ, he is silent. Anybody ever been there, you've been trying to hear from heaven, it's silent. How many of you, if you come to church and the pastor wouldn't talk to you, how many of you would get a little upset? If you went to Pastor Angel and said, Pastor, and he just looked at you and didn't answer you? And then some of the leaders would say, I wish they'd leave. I wish they would get out of here. You know what? You know what most Okies would do? We'd shake off the dust and we'd never come back. Because we would be mad as a hornet. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. 
But the Bible says then. Everybody say then. Then. When? When she's ignored. When she finds prejudice against her. The Bible says then she came and worshipped him. How many of you know she didn't feel like it? But can I tell you, she left there with her miracle that day because she learned that if she would go ahead and worship God, that God would hear her worship and she could worship her way. Even when the heavens were silent and you couldn't get a word from the Lord, she learned that if you'll go ahead and worship God, I'm telling you, you'll get the attention of the Lord when the hell has unleashed everything it's got against you. If you'll just learn to worship your way through it, you can see God move even when you don't think it can happen you've got to worship your way through it how many of you believe I'm preaching the truth this morning you say why should I worship the Lord brother Jarvis the first reason we ought to worship God is that's what God requires Psalms 135 and verse 1 verse 3 says praise the Lord praise the name of the Lord praise him O you servants of the Lord you that stand in the house In the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord. For the Lord is good, sing praises to his name, for it is pleasant. Psalms 148 verse 11 said, Kings, all people, princes, judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord. Then I tell you, there's some folks that still thinks that doesn't include them. I hear them say stuff like this, I'm just not emotional. Well, you let somebody let their shopping cart get loose and hit their new pickup truck. How many of you know they'll get emotional? You let somebody bite their baby or grandbaby in the nursery. How many of you know they get emotional? Some folks say, well, that's just for those folks that up front. That's just for those that preach. That's just for those that sing. But just in case you think the Lord excluded you, he said in Psalms 150, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. In fact, there's only one group of people that has been excluded from worshiping God. The Bible says in Psalms 115 and verse 17, the dead praise not the Lord. I want you to look down that pew. If they're alive, how many of you know they ought to be worshiping God? If you are alive, God requires you to worship. You know what God is saying? If you're breathing in oxygen from my earth, you ought to be exhaling praise. Can I tell you the reason we ought to worship in the good times and in the bad times is because God requires us to worship Him. God wants your worship. Psalms 100. Oh, there are some churches that I go to and they're, they're just quiet. They're not emotional. But you same folks that are dead as 4 o'clock in the morning, you let somebody with crimson and cream run on the field. Or you let some orange run on the field. Am I preaching now? Those that couldn't lift their hand in church. Can I tell you when... When the Cowboys or the Sooners get a touchdown, you know what they're doing? They take a ball and they cross the white line and here's somebody that wouldn't say amen and church gets up out of the recliner and goes. Because they get excited and they say they're not emotional, but they lie. Everybody is emotional to some extent. Somebody said, well, we just worship God way down deep inside. Well, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Can I tell you, the Lord loves worship. The Lord wants us to worship. The Lord desires us to worship. But more than that of a created being, of an angel, the Lord wants the people of God, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God wants to hear those that he sent his son to die for, lift up their hands and begin to worship God in the good times and in the bad times. And for 70 years right here on this property, people have worshipped through the good times and they've worshipped through the bad times and we're victorious today because if we will worship God, God will hear our cry. I'll give the Lord a hand clap off of praise. And I'm hurrying. 
Psalms 104 says, To enter his gates with thanksgiving, we're to enter his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. You know what the Lord is saying? You can't even get in his presence unless you come in worshiping. The only way you can get in the presence of God is to worship your way into his presence. But if you would stand and listen at the gate in a lot of our churches, you would hear them coming in, complaining, it's too hot, it's too cold. How many of you know in Oklahoma we can say all of these? It's too wet, it's too dry. How many of you know back in May we were looking for an ark? Now we're looking for a puddle. And when they leave, it was too long, it was too loud. And we wonder why we never get in the presence of God because the Lord said the only way you're going to get into the holy place, the only way you're going to get there, you've got to come in worshiping. You've got to come in worshiping God through the good times and through the bad times. If you want to get in my presence, you've got to worship God through whatever you're going through if you want to get in his presence. You know, there's some folks that have the spirit of heaviness. The room lights up when they leave. You'll get that in a minute. I heard of a story, Pastor Ray, I think it happened down in Kentucky, not too from our, far from our neck of the woods, but him and I are from, uh, I'm from Hamilton, where they call Hamiltucky. But I heard this happen in one of the churches. Somebody was jumped up over here, and they were supposed to have been a testimony service, but it sounded more like a defeat service. Somebody was talking over here about how bad it was, and what a bad week they'd had. And somebody over here said, I know what you're talking about. This has been an awful week. Somebody else jumped up and said, the washing machine broke down. The car broke down. The cat got run over. And the poor pastor had to try to preach after it. And there was an old drunk that had staggered in, Brother John. And the pastor went to him and said, Brother, wouldn't you like to have what these folks have? And that drunk sobered up and said, Preacher, y'all are pitiful. You all need help. I'm going to get my buddies at the bar to pray for you all. You all need help. You know what? I've heard some drunks in the back of police cruisers sound happier than some folks I've pastored. Now, if a drunk on their way to hell can sing a song, how many of you know a child of God on their way to heaven ought to be able to sing a song of praise? I'm not going to let a drunk out sing me. In fact, I'm not going to let the rocks or the mountains cry out. I'm going to worship God in the good times. I'm, I'm going to worship God in the bad times. The Bible tells us we need to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. If you want to get rid of that spirit of heaviness, put on a garment of praise. How many of you believe that this morning? Why should I worship God, number two? Because it's what God desires. Right now, while we're gathered here at the North Elliott Church of God, the Bible tells us there are angels positioned around the throne. The Bible tells us that John saw four angels who rest neither day or night. And you know what they've been doing all morning long? They've been saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. Do you know what? When you lay your head down tonight, guess what? Those angels will not have left. They will still be there saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. When you wake up in the morning, when your alarm goes off and you jump out of bed or you drag out of bed, those angels would have not left. They're still there worshiping the Lord around the throne. When you go to cash your check Friday, guess what? They'll still be there saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. God loves and desires your worship. Some folks want to argue over worship. They want to argue over a style. They want to argue about how we do it or one particular style or, or music. The woman at the well, Jesus ran into her. She wanted to get into discussion about worship. 
But in John chapter 4, verse 23, Jesus cut to the chase. When she said, some say, go yonder mountain worship. Some say, you go to Jerusalem and worship in Jerusalem. Jesus said, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Don't miss this part. And the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit and those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Did you know this morning the eyes of the Lord were going to and fro across the earth and the Lord was looking for somebody that would worship Him in spirit and in truth. His eyes were coming across the Atlantic Ocean and hit the east coast of the United States and he was looking for people that would worship him. Guess what? He found people all over the east coast and then he moved to the Midwest. He was looking for people that would worship him in spirit and in truth. And he's come to the heartland of America and his eyes are going to and fro and he's looking for somebody that would worship him in spirit and in truth. And can I tell you for 70 years he found people right here on this property that lifted up their hands in the good times and in the bad times and they worshiped their way through whatever came. God loves your worship. The Father, look at what Jesus said. The Father seeketh such to worship Him. Early in our ministry, we, we left Ohio, went to Virginia. And then we went to our first church, second church in Louisville, Kentucky. I didn't want to go. Brother Kilman, I didn't want to go. I was running about 200 where I was at. And the overseer called me in Kentucky. And he said, I, I can't get you off my mind. He said, on a good day, they're running 40. And me and the Lord had an argument. I said, now, Lord, this is not the way this is supposed to work. I'm not supposed to leave 200 and go to 40. I'm supposed to leave 200 and go to 400. I walked into a prayer meeting in Pulaski, Virginia, two hours away. One of the legends from his church Charles Novell Home Church in Pulaski, Virginia. I was there when his mom and daddy were there. I walked in a prayer meeting. Nobody even knew I'd slipped in. Jan and I had slipped in in a, in a basement of some folks' house. People were praying. They didn't know who was there, who went there. Jan and I came in late, and all of a sudden, there was a message in tongues, interpretation. This is what it said. Why are you standing looking at the number? When I have opened the door, well, I was the only preacher in that prayer meeting. And I thought, I don't want to go there, Lord. But we moved, went to Kentucky. Midweek service. There was a whole whopping seven or eight people there. And I just felt led of the Lord to push everything back and just worship the Lord. And in that midweek service... All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit spoke, Pastor Ken, and said, I have searched this city for someone that would let me be God. You have learned the secret to my heart. If you will continue to worship me, I'll unbolt your windows. I'll unlock your doors. I will cause a flood of humanity to look in your direction. Well, we were in a dead-end street, and hardly anybody in the whole city knew we were there. And I wrote it down, and I went home, and the devil started laughing. A flood of humanity? Look in this direction. Long story short, God began to open doors. We broke out in a revival, a four-week revival with Perry Stone, and people were coming from three and four states away. We began a television ministry. And I walked in the television station one day, and The station manager says, come here, Pastor, i got to share something with you. I said, what is it? He said, we got the ratings. Would you like to know how many people are watching you every Sunday? And I said, no, there's just probably a few little grannies watching me. 
He said, you need to sit down, Pastor. He said, every Sunday there's 50,000 people watching you preach the gospel from your pulpit. Have you ever heard that white men can't jump? Have you ever heard fat man can't dance? I'm telling you, that day I did both of them. And I went back to my Bible and I took that that said, I will cause a flood of humanity to look in this direction. And I reminded the devil, yes, 50,000 people is a flood of humanity to look in this direction. You know why? It was nothing to do with me. But we begin to say, God is the audience. We're going to worship God. If people like it, good. If they don't, good. And we begin to grow. We were in our second location. And one Sunday, a guy showed up in our church. He had been in eight churches in seven years. And it was my turn. I know there's nobody like that in Mays County, but I can tell you what, Pastor Ray will tell you, there's a bunch of them in Butler County like that. They hop from church to church. But you know what? This man, one Sunday he came down. This is what he did, Pastor. Young man, I want to talk to you. I knew he wasn't coming to brag on me. So I made sure I stayed up here. And he pointed his finger in my face, and this is what he said. I don't like all this singing. I don't like all this worship. And if you don't quit, I'm leaving. Now, how many of you know sometimes you don't know if you're anointed or ornery? I looked at him, and he was a big guy, so I stayed up here. And I said, you know what? I've done a survey around here, and I can only find two people that hate worship. You're one of them, and the devil's the other. He looked at me and said, well, I ain't never had anybody talk to me like that. I said, somebody ought to talk to you like that. I'm sorry you don't like it, but we weren't doing it for you. You weren't there on the dead end street when God said he loved it, and that's why we're doing it. I turned around, looked to the music pastor. I said, we better crank it up tonight. We got the devil mad. Sing more tonight. We're going to worship God because that's what's brought us here. Can I tell you, you can worship your way through whatever the devil brings against you. God loves your worship. And I told him, I said, we weren't doing it for you. We were doing it for him. I'm sorry you don't like it, but he loves it. How many of you know God loves worship? And I'm closing with this. Why should we worship God? Not only is it what God requires, not only is it what God desires, but it's what brings God's fire of His presence. You know, when God finds people that are worshiping Him in spirit and truth, the Bible says He's seeking those to worship Him. He's looking and He's seeking for some to worship them. But when He finds them, He doesn't just look and wave at us. But the Bible tells us in Psalms 22 and verse 3 that God inhabits the praises of Israel. God inhabits the praises of his people. If you would do a word study on that, that literally means when God finds people that are worshiping him in spirit and truth, he sets his throne up in the atmosphere right above their head. He sets his throne up right above your head. The Bible calls the devil what? The prince and power of what? The air. You do a word study on that, that means the atmosphere right above your head. Somebody said, I wish I could get rid of the devil. Let me show you how you can get rid of the devil. How many ever took physics? How many hate physics? You know, one of the laws of physics says this, no two objects can occupy the same space. As long as that podium is there, nothing else can go in its place. 
But the Lord says, when I find people that are worshiping me in spirit and in truth, I'm setting my throne up right above their head. How many of you know when the devil looks up and sees the throne of God coming down, the devil is no match for the glory of the Lord and the devil leaves. Somebody says, I wish I could get rid of the devil. Here's how you get rid of the devil. You worship your way through whatever you're going through and you build a, a sanctuary for him to live in and your praise and God will live in your praise. If you want God to come down, you just begin to worship him in spirit and in truth. To come to the instruments. You say, that's easy for you to say. Worship your way through it. I am going to give you a long history, but I'll just give you the last several years. 2014, we're on our way to the General Assembly. We, we drive from Alabama to University of Cincinnati Hospital. Jan's sister had a massive stroke at 57 years of age. And while we're there, just got there. Her sister, a massive stroke. Phone rings. It's her doctor. And her doctor says, we found a mass on your brain. She said, well, we're leaving here and going to Orlando for the Church of God General Assembly. And it lasts through all next week. He said, well, you can stay for a couple days, but you got to be back here on Thursday. Found a mass on her brain. 2019. And I tell you, we worshiped our way through it. It's hard to get up and bless God when you got a brain tumor. 2019, we just came back from Ohio from Christmas. Just back in the office, January 3rd. Our 37-year-old daughter that worked at the Church of God Home for Children dropped dead with a massive heart attack. It's hard, Brother Kilman. I had to try to worship my way through losing my baby. And then we just got back up on our feet after having the wind knocked out of us. Just getting things going back where we could feel like getting up to worship God again. And I got that dreaded call when I was going through the pastoral process with you all then. They said, you've got a tumor on your kidneys and it's cancer. All of them just a few weeks sitting here going it's hard but you know what I had to learn to do like folks for 70 years have had to do here in the good times it's easy to worship but in the hard times it's hard to worship but you know what I found out if you'll go ahead and lift up your hand when you don't feel anything if you'll keep it up long enough the Lord will touch you right where you are And I don't know what you're going through today, but can I tell you it's worked for 70 years plus. That if you'll worship your way through whatever you're going, you will be victorious because whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And I'm looking at a bunch of overcomers today. Would you stand to your feet with me this morning? Father, I thank you for the witness and testimony of this church, a Pentecostal witness to green country, oh God. For 70 years, Lord, this church has been a witness. This church has been made fun of. This church has been ostracized. 
but they continued to proclaim the Pentecostal message. And Lord, through every attack, through every distraction, through every thing the devil threw at them, Lord, they continued to worship their way through it. Father, I thank you for the testimony of this church. And Lord, I know beyond any shadow of a doubt, this was born of you. This was born of you. And Lord, I know that you're going to continue to keep your hand upon it for whatsoever is born of God is an overcomer. And Father, I prophesy that the greatest days are yet to be seen and what you want to do for your glory and for your kingdom when we bind together and we worship our way through it in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. While every head's bowed and every eye's closed, no one looking around, you're here and say, Brother Jarvis, I need God to help me. There's some stuff I'm going through. I need God to help me to get through it today. Would you just slip up your hand and write back down, I need God to help me through it today. How, yes, 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 hallelujah. Father God, you see the hearts, dear Lord God. I tell you what I want us to do, church. I want us to all come together, and I want us to pray a prayer together. Would you come, everyone, out of your seat? Let's come in front of this church. And as we come, we are recognizing the hand of God has been upon us and upon this church. I want to invite all of us to come, and let's have a closing prayer together this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you know what people are going through. You know what they're battling with today, Father. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It's been through the blood of the Lamb. We're made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Lord, we thank you that we're overcomers today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you just to lay your hand on somebody there. You don't know what they're going through right now. Would you ask God to minister to them right now? Father, all over this sanctuary, there are people that are going through things. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, would you touch their lives today, Lord? God, help them through whatever they're battling through today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that we're more than conquerors today through Christ Jesus today, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you for your touch. We thank you for your Holy Spirit today. Minister to lives and hearts this morning, God, all over this place. Father, in the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Pastor Ray, come here. I want you to pray what you feel led of the Lord in your heart to pray over the needs right now. He's a great big God. I was thinking while you were sharing about the history and heritage of this great church, and I was thinking about all the ways the enemy has tried to attack not only churches, but our country. And we all know our country is, is in trouble. But we have a God who is still in control. And 70 years later, you are still standing. You're still, you've still got a dinner after church and a big old sign that says 70 years. I have no doubt that the same power that dropped down into the heart of those who felt to plant this church that same heart of God is in every one of you right here. And I agree with what you said. The greatest days are yet. Because you know what? This is the generation that will see the return of Jesus Christ. So we're in the greatest generation of this church's history. So I do want to pray. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your pastor. I want to pray for this city. I love Pryor. I get up here quite often. And I love this place. And I want to tell you, I believe God is doing a mighty move and a work in this community. He's got it. And that, this is one of his places. Did you know that you are headquarters for God Almighty? You're headquarters for the Lord right here. You're not the only one. But you are a lighthouse set up on a hill. A city on a hill that cannot be hid. Amen. How many of you are hungry for God to do a great work? 
through this church. Let's pray together. Father God, we come to you. Lord, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that's been here from the moment we started service. We thank you, God, that we're not celebrating a denomination. We're not celebrating a certain preacher or pastor from the past. We are celebrating the work of God, the power of the Holy Spirit in this community that is saved and sanctified and filled with your Spirit. And God has healed over and over again. Lord, we testify to the goodness of God, the power of the Holy Ghost, and we give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise. Heal every broken heart and body. Touch every family here today, this morning, every mom and dad, brother and sister, every grandparent. God, in the name of Jesus, lay your hand on them, strengthen them, heal them, deliver them. Let the work of God be accomplished and done as God we never fail to turn back to you and say thank you. Lord, with hearts of gratitude, understanding and knowing that, God, we are nothing without you, we thank you that you have empowered us with your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for an anointing such as this church has never had before. God, anoint every singer, anoint every word that comes from this pulpit, and let every heart be anointed to hear. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Come here, Pastor Ken. You have picked up the mantle that Joel Stamper picked up. He put it down, then he picked it right back up. You've picked up the mantle that the pastors before you have picked up. Brother Kilman carried for 36 years. I want you to stretch your hand this way, the man that's picked up the mantle to lead you to where God wants to lead you. Would you just right now lift your hand and stretch it towards your pastor today. Father, I thank you for this man and his wife, dear Lord. I thank you for their ministry. Lord, I pray for the touch of God upon him as he's never had. God, give him strength. God, give him vision. Give him wisdom like he's never had before, Lord. I pray for a special anointing of the Holy Spirit. God, in favor like he's never had to win this whole community and this whole area for you today, Father God. We ask for the blessings of God upon the angels, upon North Elliott Church of God, upon the ministries of this church. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Would you give the Lord a hand clap for him? Hallelujah. Well, we've been biblical today. For they that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So I would be I would be remiss if if I didn't say that there are many people that had hands in what has taken place today. Um, my wife oversees all the kids' ministry. That's where she is right now, and she's probably wanting me to be quiet. So y'all come get your kids and get the kids out of the, the nursery. But all that she put in, all the effort, all the decorating her and the staff wives, we're so blessed. We have a couple of paid staff members, but we got about three other staff members that volunteer their time here, and we're just so blessed. Um, Pastor Reuben, the praise team, Pastor David, Mia, Pastor Austin and Cami, Pastor Stephen, Jessica, Pastor John and Sonia, Taylor and the media team, all of our kids and nursery workers today and all of the ladies that are serving today, the setup team, the teardown team, um, all of you that provided food or cooked food, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I told uh, Pastor Kilman that there were a couple of things that I that I knew about North Elliott before I came. I knew them, and I I knew Linda and Gary from youth camp. Those are two things I knew about about North Elliott. North Elliott was fierce competitors on anything that they did. But I said, you know what's the secret of North Elliott? I said it's the people. I said I know why you've stayed 37 years. It's the people. And the people are the ones that make the pastor, and the people are the ones that make the ministries. 
and the people are the ones behind the scenes that put all of this 70th together. We have a memory wall over in the Air Force that has a lot of old pictures. We've got barbecue. If you cannot stay and eat with us, please go through the line and take as much as you'd like to go. I always tell people two things about their, about coming here. One is with your kids. Don't leave your kids. They're not going home with me. Right? Number two, all of that food can't come home to me. <laughs> but the banana pudding is coming to my house. Anything else, anything else is fair game. But the banana pudding is staying at my house. So, um, so let's pray. We're going to bless the food. You can immediately cross the street, get in line, and just start eating, all right? Father, we bless the food. We bless this day. We put a seal on it. Now, God, be with us in our time of eating and our time of fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See you across the street.